A few weeks ago, I loaded the IoT stick software on the new M5 stick C2 and quite sadly, it kept crashing on me. What was going on? In this video, I discuss the differences between the old and new versions of the IoT stick hardware and how it is supported in the new IoT stick version 166 software I just released. Hello everyone and welcome to the IoTT channel. I am Hans Tanner. A special welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back if you have been here before. I am happy you made it here and thank you for your support of my channel. And just in case if you find this kind of content interesting and helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Simply click the subscribe button and bell icon below and you will be in a premium seat whenever a new video comes out. The M5 Stick C, which is the hardware of the IoT Stick, is a microcontroller package that is almost ideal for controlling model railroading electronics components. Small in size, a powerful microcontroller built in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, integrated display and battery, and USB-C connector along with some I.O. pins and other components and not too expensive. The bad news though is that both the M5 Stick C as well as the M5 Stick C Plus have been discontinued by the manufacturer and were replaced by the new M5 Stick C Plus 2. And unfortunately the differences are bigger than you would think. Big enough indeed to make the current software crashing. The reason for discontinuing the two older versions of the M5 stick was that one of the used components was no longer available, so a redesign was needed. The obsolete component was the power management system. Unfortunately, it was not replaced and this somewhat messes up the IoT stick software. Here is the comparison of the hardware of stick plus and stick plus 2. The first difference is the processor. Stick Plus 2 is using the newer version V3 of the ESP32 processor. Basically the same device, a dual core controller, but the difference is the size of the RAM and the flash memory. This makes a difference as there is more room for additional functions of the IoT stick software. To give you an idea, the current version 166 of the software, which I just released, fills 64% of the available storage capacity on a Stick C or Stick C, but only 41% on a Stick C. Also, a good step forward is the increased amount of available RAM, which now is 2 MB and the twice as large flash memory for data like the Stick web pages and configuration files. Another massive improvement is the 65% larger battery capacity. For most IoT heads, this has no impact as you connect an external power supply anyway. But where it really makes a difference is for speed profiling with the purple hat. In my tests, I was able to operate the purple hat for more than one hour, which is a big improvement over the roughly 25 minutes available when using the Stick Plus. The Stick Plus 2 also uses a different UART chip, which means a different driver on your PC to send and receive data. But usually the correct driver is installed automatically, so that is not a big deal. On the downside, however, there is the lack of the power management system. Let's compare the differences on the schematics. Here is the schematics of the M5 Stick C Plus. The large grey chip is the power management unit. Without going into details, we can see that pretty much everything is connected to it. Power inputs from USB and external power in on the head connector. The battery, the 3.3V and 5V power rails to all the other components and the boost converter that converts the battery voltage to the external 5V supply on the head connector. The power management chip itself is pretty powerful. It can charge the battery with up to 1.4 amps and the internal buck converters are all rated around 1 amp. 
This is the reason why the IoT stick can run a yellow or blue hat with several LEDs attached to it without external power connection, at least for a little while. Besides that, the power management unit interface provides data about voltages, currents and temperature, which is the basis for the technical data display on the IoT stick. Comparing that with the new M5 stick C plus 2 shows quite some differences. Here we have a simple battery charger chip with a maximum current of 500 milliamps. The battery output connects to a buck converter for the 3.3 volt supply and a boost converter for the 5 volt supply to the head connectors. The maximum currents are 3 amps for the buck and 2 amps for the boost converter. That itself is okay, but how do you supply that from a battery and charger that only can supply 500 milliamps? Yes, it does not work without depleting the battery. And therefore, if you want to power external devices like LEDs, you have to provide an external supply via 5 volt in. This can come either from the USB port or the 5 volt in contact on the head connector. So what happens in reality is that if you run a yellow or blue hat with the stick connected to the USB port of your computer, it works. But as soon as you disconnect the USB cable, the current is supplied from the battery for a few seconds and then the stick shuts down because of power failure. If you run a purple hat on the other hand, which only draws a few milliamps, the power of the stick is sufficient to supply the attached hardware and, as mentioned, it can run for much longer because of the larger battery. Overall, the missing power management chip is a step in the wrong direction, but it is not a showstopper. It has some impact, though, on the power on and off behavior, as described on the m stack webpage. For the stick C and the stick C+, this process was pretty simple. Click the power button to start it up. Click and hold it for 6 seconds to shut it down. For the stick C plus 2, the behavior is different and depends whether there is external power connected to it or not. To start it up, you have to connect power or you hold down the power button for at least 2 seconds. To shut down, hold the power button for about 6 seconds. However, what happens in that case depends whether power is connected or not. If there is power, it does not shut down completely, but goes in hibernation mode. To wake it up, hold the power button for 2 seconds again. Without power, it shuts down completely. I noticed that it sometimes has difficulties waking up from hibernation mode and it takes several approaches. Maybe this is something I can improve in the software, we will see. For the moment, it seems that the most reliable way to start it up is by applying power to it. And to shut down, simply unpower it. It will shut down within a few seconds if there is power consumption on the head, or when the battery is down to a voltage of about 3.5 volts. There are a few minor differences you might be interested in if you want to do some programming yourself. Here is a table of the usage of IO pins. Most notable, the pin numbers for the LED have changed. That is the LED that I use to indicate LocoNet activity. On the stick and stick plus, it was on IO9. On the stick plus 2, it is on pin 19 and the infrared LED, which used to have a separate I.O. pin, is now also on pin 19, so they can no longer be controlled individually. Funny enough, the logic of the LED has also changed. On the old stick, the LED was on when the I.O. pin was low. On the stick plus 2, the pin needs to go high to turn on the LED. There are some I.O. changes for the display as well, but this is normally handled by the display library and as programmer you don't have to worry about it. Now, with all these changes to the hardware, the I.O. TT Stick Plus 2 can no longer run the same software as the other two versions 
and for the first time I have to release hardware specific updates. The reason for this is not so much the missing power management system, which could be handled in a configuration option. The bigger problem is the memory configuration with the increased flash size and therefore different parameters for the installation. So here is how it works. If you go to the GitHub page, click the 1.6.6 install file option. You then see four zip files listed, m5update.zip and m5update.macos.zip are for the IOTT stick and IOTT stick plus so the old hardware version. The other files, m5updateplus2.zip and m5updateplus2macos.zip are for the new IOTT Stick Plus 2 hardware. As before, you click on the file you need and on the next page you click the download arrow in the upper right corner of the page. Download the file and store it on your hard drive. You then extract the content Connect the IoTT stick to a USB port of your computer and run the batch file. The installer should find the stick automatically and install the software. If not, follow the instructions in the README file to force the installation to the USB port the stick is connected to. So the new version 166 supports the IoTT stick plus 2, but what other improvements are included in the new version? Here is a list of bug fixes that come along with version 166. Many thanks to all users who reported bugs and were willing to spend some time to test and verify bug fixes. I really appreciate all feedback that helps to make the IoTT stick software better. So here is the list of improvements. Saving the configuration file from the node setup page is working again. Version 165 had a problem with saving the node configuration to a disk file, so it was not possible to store the configuration and reload it on another stick. User Greg notified me about the problem and he even pointed me to a missing line in the code. Easy fix, thank you Greg. Then functions for F14 to F28 for the Red Hat are now implemented. The Red Hat so far did not properly support local functions F14 and higher. In fact, it crashed whenever you tried activating one of the functions from Engine Driver. User RCFlyer10 reported the problem and even implemented it in the software. All I had to do was merging it into the code base and now it is working. Excellent work, RCFlyer10. Thanks a lot. Then I added a large display option for the purple hat speed measurement. User Louis asked for a larger font in the purple hat display page. He is running the purple hat as a real time speedometer on a club layout and wanted a larger display so the speed can be seen from a distance. I created a new option in the purple hat setup screen to enlarge the font size. Thank you, Louis, for the suggestion and doing the initial testing. Next, the test end criteria for speed profiling has been refined. Users John and Aaron reported some problems with the purple hat when speed profiling. In one case, the messages from the stick got shortened on the way to the profile page, and in the other case, the speed profiling test went on forever. Turns out that the two problems were somehow related and as a result, I added an additional criteria to stop the speed profiling test if something goes wrong. Thanks John and Aaron for finding the problems and testing the bug fixes. And yes John, I still need to do the notification window you suggested, but that will come with the next version. Then an annoying MQTT message duplication was removed. User Joel reported a duplicate display of MQTT messages in the Loconet viewer when using the MQTT gateway and some problems with the initialization of the server positions when the green hat starts up. Thanks Joel for the reporting. The duplication is fixed in the current version. The servo positioning remains on my to-do list and will be addressed in the next version. 
there are a few more, but more technical and less visible from the outside. And of course, if you run into a problem using the IoT stick, please record it so that it can be addressed in an upcoming version of the software. The IoT stick Plus 2 is now available in the TD store. It replaces the older IoT stick Plus. I also have some standard sticks left in inventory, so if you buy a stick, you can choose between the new IoT stick Plus 2 and the original IoT stick with a lower price tag. If you plan to run a purple hat, the IoT stick Plus 2 is strongly recommended because of the larger display and more powerful battery. For all other head products, the standard IoT stick will do without problems. Once I run out of inventory, the Stick Plus 2 will remain the only hardware option, but of course I will keep providing software updates for the old hardware as well. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you. And you have now a good understanding of the differences between the old IoT stick and the new IoT stick plus 2 hardware. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. Also, feel free to let me know your opinion in the comments section of this video. I always like to hear from my viewers and appreciate your feedback. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.